through community gathered, whether it be in person or online. We invite you to actively participate in worship today, in song and in prayer. Perhaps set up your space with candles or a basin of water to remember your baptism. The words for worship will be within the video, and you can also find them on the website if you would like to print out a copy to follow along. Take a moment now to breathe deeply remembering that we worship the one who is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, 
and on this day you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water and all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Please pray with me. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. that you have joined in Zoom worship this morning. I want to teach you a song, and this is a song that we'll use again next week. It is words that you've heard a lot out of the mouth of Jesus and out of um, all of the messengers who come from God. They always say, don't be afraid. And then during this Easter season, we hear a lot of times, peace be with you. So this is a song for us to sing all week, and then we'll sing it again next Sunday. Be not afraid, sing out for joy, Christ is risen, alleluia. Be not afraid, sing out for joy, Christ is risen, alleluia. All right, join with me. Be not afraid, sing out for joy. Christ is risen, alleluia. Be not afraid, sing out for joy. Christ is risen, alleluia. One more time. Be not afraid, sing out for joy, Christ is risen, alleluia. Be not afraid, sing out for joy, 
Christ is risen, alleluia. Alleluia. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Alleluia. A reading from John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked away for fear, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. This week, I heard a radio story about the changes in noise due to the coronavirus. It was a welcome change from the majority of sad and disheartening newsreels. The story mentioned that the environment is one of the beneficiaries of this time. Due to decreased travel and commuting, animals are reclaiming spaces that they had been pushed out of. Smog is lifting and air is clearing. And with so much less noise, the birds have more energy to put towards thriving and raising healthy young ones. The story reports that normally, Humans rattle the earth like a tiny earthquake. Automil automobiles, planes, trains, even our walking registers on seismographs as a kind of constant static. And now that static is way less noisy, giving seismologists a unique opportunity to perhaps detect more subtle vibrations that usually get drowned out. As I consider this gift for our earth, I also felt that it was resonating with me on a different level. This coronavirus has changed many of our daily rhythms, impacting us in all, all in different kinds of ways. Some homes have been turned into one room schoolhouses and offices. Some have been laid off and struggle to find another job. Grocery runs are meticulously planned and executed with masks and six feet of distance. Other errands are almost obsolete. We have all known one effect or another of shelter in place, keeping us from physical contact with those that we love. We've been thrown off of the regular drumbeat that we marched ever forward on. For me, it's been a little like the seismologists are hearing, much quieter. The normal noise has left large spaces of silence that can sometimes feel like emptiness. Sometimes when things get that quiet, I can't even rest. 
I get busy trying to fill that emptiness with a new kind of buzzing. I've organized the back room three times now, and I suppose this weekend I could clean out the kitchen drawers and dust the top shelves of everything. I can't even sit still to binge watch anything on Netflix. Quiet and silence can be uncomfortable, not just for my busy hands, but for my busy mind and my busy heart. Just as I have cleaned out closets and shelves, my memory bank seems to be pulling things out of dusty corners, things that I thought had been put to rest, but begin to stress me out again. It's already a stressful time. I can't do my normal thing. There's a virus out there and I can't rest, and I don't need another thing to make me stressed out. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house were locked in fear. In a deeply stressful time when the disciples thought their savior had been lost forever, were afraid of what the authorities might do to them and had no idea of what was coming next, Jesus comes right in through those locked doors and says, peace be with you. Jesus's body, physical and yet not physical, somehow walks through walls and locked doors and comes to be with these disciples in the middle of their hiding place. But not all of them at first. Thomas was not there the first time Jesus came and didn't get to see the risen Lord and hear his voice like the other disciples had. I can't help but feel compassion for him Deep in the stressful throes of grief, it would be hard to believe such an impossible thing just because someone else said so. And yet, amidst that deep grief, Thomas asks for what he needs to believe. And Jesus provides. Amidst fear and grief, come, Jesus comes with peace be with you and allows Thomas to see and to feel that indeed his Jesus is risen. Alleluia. Peace be with you in times of confusion and fear. Peace be with you when you don't know what is next. Peace be with you when you grieve what was and don't know how to hope for what is to come. When we are holed up and worried, Jesus comes in and just by his presence brings peace. Jesus does not judge our deep doubt and fear that swirl around us. Rather, Jesus comes to us through walls and locked doors and gives us what we need to open our eyes in freedom and say, my God and my Lord. How much more do we know what freedom looks and feels like when we can see it in the places we, where we are locked up? When the rug of normalcy has been pulled out from under us, when our days have been turned upside down and we cannot keep track of time, when our thoughts race to cover the loudness of empty, emptiness. Be still and know that I am God. Peace, be still. The storm rages. Peace, be still. There's no denying it. Our world has been shaken up, and here we are waiting in the quiet, wondering what is next. Here in this moment of stillness, the Holy Spirit is moving. And what if we let that stillness in? What if we gently stop ourselves and rest in that silence where the Holy Spirit is holding us, comforting us, and guiding us? 
Perhaps we can see and feel that Jesus is here with us right now in this place, in the family that you are quarantining with, in the pets that keep walking across our keyboards as we try to type and have Zoom calls, in the moment you remember to call a loved one, in the Zoom dinners and church services like this one, in the brief interactions with grocery store workers and delivery people, even if it's just a wave through the window. For God is still on the move with us and for us, still calling us forward in ways always being made new. Isaiah names this in the 43rd chapter. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. In the stillness and the silence of the wilderness and the desert, we can hear the still, small voice of God calling us to believe in God's promises that God is our God. God will not forget us. God is with us within all things and forever. Right now, God is calling us to new ways of loving one another, new ways of forgiving one another, of supporting and advocating for one another, and even of feeding one another. Rooted in the freedom, forgiveness, healing, and redemption of the one who conquered death, we are strengthened to stop and rest in his goodness so that we may be empowered in new ways of love that we could never have imagined. With our bodies open to the quiet, we can hear how love is ever new, even while we shelter in place. He is risen, Alleluia. Now hear this poem. And where is Jesus? this strange, strange Easter day. Not lost in our locked churches any more than he was sealed in that dark sepulcher. The locks are loosed, the stone is rolled away, and he is up and risen long before, alive at large and making his strong way into the world he gave his life to save. No need to seek him in this empty grave. He might have been a, in, a wafer in the hands of priests this day, or music from the lips of red-robed choristers. Instead, he slips away from church, shakes off our linen bands to don his apron with a nurse. He grips and lifts a stretcher, soothes with gentle hands the frail flesh of the dying, gives them hope breathes with the breathless, lends them strength to cope. On Thursday we applauded, for he came and served us in a thousand names and faces, mopping our sick room floors and catching traces of that virus which was death to him. Good Friday happened in a thousand places, where Jesus held the helpless, died with them, that they might share his Easter in their need. Now they are risen with him, risen indeed. Christ is risen. Alleluia. <laughs>
uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Open the doors we close, O God, when we fear those who worship you in different ways. Guide us to unity and harmony so that we may come to respect and cherish our commonalities. Lord, in your mercy. Open the paths we ignore, O God, when we prioritize financial gain and convenience over listening to the groaning of the earth. Inspire all to care for the world you have made so that the living things on this earth might thrive. Lord, in your mercy. Open the rooms we lock, O God, to those who live without a homeland or place of safety. We pray that generous nations offer refuge and peace for all. Lord, in your mercy. Open the hearts we close, O God, to the cries of those in pain. We pray for those isolated physically or emotionally through incarceration, addic addiction, mental illness, chronic suffering, grief, and all in need, especially those we name before you now. Lord, in your mercy. Open the ways of love, O God, in the pursuit of peace throughout the world and bless the efforts of missionaries, healthcare professionals, activists for women and children and relief workers, especially those who find themselves in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy. Open the ways to eternal life, O God, as we remember those who have died in faith. Free us from the fear of death, that we may embrace, embrace the peace which you have promised. Lord, in your mercy. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jum Ripsu, Salam. The peace of Christ be with you all.
Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Feed us for service in your name, in the strength, and strength of the risen Christ. Amen. words of blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope and turn your mourning into dancing. Alleluia. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Alleluia. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia.